stained as fuck. It's not tomato. Naughty tomato. From the shop with the smallest aisles ever. For details on Pepsi Company pot. Is it made by the Pepsi people? Or am I just being a bit? 16.06. Well, we'll go for 25 minutes. We'll do five fives of a live. Like George St. Pierre would never train for more than 25 minutes if his fight was 25 minutes. Or would never do rounds for more than 25 minutes. You know, championship fights are 25 minutes. I'm not going to do a live for more than 25 minutes. <sighs> to be honest, dot, dot, dot. Leaving us hanging there. Mm. Is there a UFC this weekend? Someone will have to let me know. Is it three away at the next one? Just a regular ass Horlicks. There's not. Well, is there any combat sports other than British Fighting Championships tonight? Oh, yeah, Joshua Du Bois, of course. Uh, Joshua, probably, probably some kind of straight right hand. I'm not incredibly clued up on large boxes from Europe, etc. I like small people from Asia and Mexico. What do you think of Teddy Stringer? Teddy Stringer, sound, bosh. Trained with him in San Diego. Had some good spars with him. Gutted that his opponent pulled out. I don't know why. But yeah, he has a nice haircut. Do you have a pre-fight, pre-sparring routine to get into the right headspace? So pre-sparring for this fight camp, because when I broke my jaw, what happened was I went to spar and I was so confident. I had no fear of anything and I got my jaw broke. So when I got back into sparring, I would intentionally create this fear, create this fear coming into the spar. I would try and be as scared as possible. I was even using religious phrases in my head, religions that I'm not a part of, to make this fear. And then I would do other things. I would stand there motionless and everyone's just chilling about to spar. And in my head, I'm imagining the announcer calling my name in the exact way he's going to call it. And it would just start to rev up the fear. And then before the fight, it's going to come natural. I don't need to make myself more scared. I listen to four songs. These four songs I listen to in this order. This isn't a ritual. It's just I like to listen to some songs when I start my warm-up. Is Obviously, I shit a lot because it's fight day. You shit loads. Four songs I listen to. What do I listen to first? Um, ah, I completely forgot. I listened to All I, All I Ask by Adele. Crazy in Love, Beyonce featuring Jay-Z. Oh, I, li I listened to God Give Me Style because I was watching a lot of John Jones. And I entered, I listened to Every Time We Touch by Cascada. I need to make this big writing because my brain is too small. Do you coach at MFA? Yes. Coach at Middlesbrough Fight Academy, Linthorpe Road, Coaches are me, Abdul Mohammed, and my brother, featherweight champion, Harry Hardwick. Thoughts on Rico Verhoeven? Everybody who likes kickboxing needs to study Rico Verhoeven, and he's proof that it's not just you're a heavyweight, you have to concede having bad cardio and poor flexibility. So if you train hard as fuck, and if you come in with an intelligent idea, even if you're a heavyweight, you can do incredible things with high kicks and all these different... He's so creative with his low kicks. Low kicks to the back leg on the inside. He throw this kind of teep where his heels turned out, almost like he's doing an IBJJF legal leg lock. And then he just boom into the hip, disrupts people. Brilliant, incredible pace. George, if I fart on my training partner while in an armbar, am I a bad guy? So if you're currently in the armbar, that takes some physical dexterity to maneuver your butthole towards them in a threatening farting position. If you are holding an armbar and then you fart, mm, not the best. You kind of got to accept you are risking getting your face farted on when you're doing jiu-jitsu. But yeah, I've definitely been doing some armbar drills with people with a stinky butt and just like, oh man, we got to end this session. You're going BFC six tonight. Of course, we're going to British Fighting Championship. Got four fighters, Luca Parker, uh, Rachel Johnson, Zanya Kamar and fighting for the belt, co-main event, and we got Mustafa Hanif. Yes.
When we seen you in the UFC, my friend, my plan, let's just go fucking Nick Diaz, Scott Coker route. Let's just have big, good-ass scraps for titles. George, I've started training the last two weeks. Any tips for beginners? Just train as much as you can and be genuinely interested and curious about it. Don't put any extra pressures of, I'm going to fight in this many months' time. I'm going to do this, that, and the other. You have no clue. You're still at a fetal phase. So what is the point in adding any extra pressure? Just enjoy it, and all the good shit comes unintentionally off of that. Thoughts on Max? I don't know. I don't know much about him. Probably not like... You know, we're in the same area and we've got a lot of pro fighters. We're a better gym. How to be more disciplined? Discipline, it, it, it's like a muscle. It needs training. And don't always go for the biggest wins first, especially with diet. You always think, I'm going to train six times this week. That's a big jump. You, If you set yourself up to fail these little goals, you kind of train in the muscle of failure, as, as daft as it sounds. If you can get really easy goals, like... I won't have this sugar in my tea, whatever it is, set yourself up these little wins, you're going to train that and it's going to domino effect. If you go for the big bite first and you don't get it and you knack it up, uh, you're kind of training yourself to fail. If you go for something easier, you get easy little wins that rack up, you're going to be more disciplined. I've got a shoulder dislocation, I want to do MMA, any tips? I'm not a physiotherapist. You've got to realize that MMA coaches, jiu-jitsu coaches, Striking coaches, kickboxing coaches, Muay Thai coaches, 99% of the time or more have nothing to do with physiotherapy, aren't really interested in physiotherapy. You occasionally get the one who's got some physiotherapy qualification. You can't just run up to them all the time and ask, I've got this injury that does this when I does that. Uh, what should I do? It's, it's nonsense. We, we're not paid for that. We don't have time for that. And we don't have any knowledge about that. You've got to see a physio. Or a doctor. Johnny Hendricks or Bilal Mohammed? Uh, Johnny Hendricks. Johnny Hendricks, old school. Seven second knockouts with the left hand. And just underhooking GSP around for fun for like three rounds. Ilya versus Max. Who wins? I'm going to go in that situation. Uh, Max. I don't, thing is, it's like Ilya Tapuri is powerful enough to shut down a volume guy. Because sometimes volume... You need to put that volume out to get to reap the rewards of your style. But if someone has really sharp counters and hits hard enough, they can sit you on the chair and put you off throwing that volume. It's a difficult thing. Contender Series Week 10, you down. You can't get a visa in that time. George, I use teeps a lot. Do you think teeps are overrated or great? I think teeps are justly rated, but teeps are like jabs. Teeps, if you only have one form of jab you'll land one or two and then probably get counted if you only throw jabs at one tempo, one target, one pace, and then exit in one way after. Teeps. If you only throw teeps at one pace, one target, one tempo, and then you only do the same thing after the teep and you don't faint it, they're going to get counted. So teeps are as good as your ability to faint a teep and your ability to mix them up. Uh... Do you know Jiraj Kachar? He claims that he trains at your gym. It's not a familiar name to me. Do you smoke, George? I don't smoke George. I don't smoke Tom. I don't smoke any of these names. AJ or Dubois? Let's go Anthony Johnson by some... <laughs> yeah, let's go Anthony Johnson. How do I get insane? Fight cardio like Marab. Train absolutely loads. Wrestle absolutely loads. There's so many people who ask cardio this, cardio that, cardio nonsense. And then when you see him do an MMA round, MMA round, the circle, the jab, and the calf kick, I'm like, how on earth are you going to build incredible fight cardio if all you do in your MMA rounds is YouTube boxing and you just flick out jabs like a lazy boxing match in small gloves? If you want cardio, you've got to push the wrestling. You've got to mix it up in your rounds. Even Kamara Usman, who's got incredible cardio, you know, he trains at altitude, this, that, and the other. But he said he doesn't run. His knees are mullered. He can't handle stairs most days. So he would just do his rounds and still go really hard when he'd wrestle, when he'd hit pads. Is the gym still a fiver per session? No, the gym is still a... Yes, the gym is still a fiver per session. I can't speak, it's a Saturday. But yeah, five pounds a class. Uh, Middlesbrough Fight Academy. 
How long do you think one has to train to reach pro level in MMA? It depends on the level of professional in your country. Every country has a different level of pro and a different organization and a different regulating body to it. And it depends on your adaptability to it. Some people take very, very long to get basic things. Some people are just naturally athletic or have some background in either construction work or rugby, the two best bases for MMA, and can just start to win world championship belts after not very long. What's the best? Palmo? I can't... Spicy Bolognese Palmo from Manjaro's. A large. Who's your favourite boxer? Of all time, my favourite boxers are Ricardo El Finito Lopez. Incredible movement. He has that ghost jab. Incredible straight punches. Just insane discipline in his stance. He would just come straight out in his stance with his elbow super tight. Beautiful range and he fight inside really well. Other ones is Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez. This guy was like the pound for pound when Floyd Mayweather was pound for pound and retired. Roman Gonzalez was then pound for pound number one. Has incredible fights. Even after his losses to Skrisicet, he did come back and have some really, really good performances against Cali Fai. And my favourite in the world at the minute. Uh, now you're in a way. I need to watch more Terence Crawford. But I fucking love Now you're in a way because I'm a weeb. How did you feel knowing your first fight is coming up? My first fight, if I cast myself back all the way to when I was 13. With 13, you're young. You're just absolutely delusional, which is the best thing. You just got that delusional confidence that everything you do in the fight is going to work the same way it works when you just walk up to a bag and kick it. You think you're going to just knee your opponent the, f the same way you knee a bag. It's going to be easy. Thoughts on Harry's next opponent, Mr. Bean Dip Bastard in the room. Um, Harry's next opponent is... He's a really solid, solid guy. 11-1 record. Shuto champion. Cage Warriors versus Shuto. Uh, UK versus Brazil. Bora versus wherever. Nova Unyawas. It's an incredible fight against someone from an incredible gym. It's another kind of world-famous gym that our dinky little Middlesbrough Fight Academy is going on against. I think Harry's bopping him, of course. Uh have you got any idea if you'll get another UFC opportunity? Well, in terms of just getting offered one, I don't have control over that. I have control over training. I have control over getting into a fight as soon as I can. George, mate, if you made it in the UFC, who would you fight first? I have no idea because I watch more Golden Era Muay Thai and K1 and freestyle wrestling than I do MMA by a landslide. How hard should I go during interclubs? Because my coach told me sometimes it turns into real fights. Uh, blast first, ask questions later. You would rather be the one who comes out sharp, defense is 100% all the time, and you'd rather be the one who clips someone a bit hard and gets told to power down than being the guy coming out lazy, getting clipped hard, and having to, you know, psych it up because you're not undoing that bit of brain damage. Full glaze. Full glaze like a donut. I'm currently 1-0, but 18-year-olds started at 17. Do you think there is still enough time to reach the top? Well, there's people starting much later than you. 1-0 and on what? 1-0 on professional? What weight class are you? If you're a heavyweight, you won't prime for another 30 years or something. 30? 20? I can't do maths today. Were you scared going into an MMA gym for the first time? Of course I was. First time I went in the gym, went up the stairs, saw the coach, Abdul Mohammed. And then he said, what's your name? I said, George, but I've got quite a timid, quiet voice. He goes, Josh. And then I'm called Josh for the next six months because I didn't correct him. Opinion on combining weightlifting and MMA. That's just obvious. Why, why would you not do resistance training? Why would any human on the planet Earth, whether they do sport or no sport or whatever, if you can move, you should do resistance training to the best extent you possibly can. Well, you don't have to become like Dorian Yates or something, but anyone who can resistance train in any capacity should resistance train, whether you do MMA, whether you're a pot washer, or whether you're, I don't know, pro streamer. When you come in sporty, sporty? What the fuck is sporty, Mr. Yad? Yadski? Oh, Sports Village. Um... I'm probably going to mooch down about quarter to six, start mooching over. We don't have any lads on until the 12th fight, I believe. 
was talking more about bodybuilding weightlifting. See, a lot of people go bodybuilding, non-functional, bodybuilding, non-functional, and then jump around on bossu balls like absolute divvies, not building any strength, not building any real physical qualities, just kind of wasting the time that they could have just put more time into their specific practice. Bodybuilding stuff, like good reps, good range of motion, and good exercises, like whatever it is, lower body, squats, hamstring curls, RDLs, you're going to develop a load. Upper body, you know, your you pull downs, incline bench, whatever it is, you're going to develop loads of strength. A lot of times, it's about training the physical mechanism. And strength is that base that allows you to, you know, build speed and whatever on top of it. If you're just doing whoopsie doopsie hoo ha, you'll get a little bit better at whoopsie doopsie hoo ha. You might get a small gain very quickly, but it's not going to build that physical base. It's not going to build the foundation. So especially out of camp, bodybuilding training is fine. I actually had a lot of success doing a lot of bodybuilding training pretty close, pretty close to the fight, like two weeks out. And it just maintained muscle better and kept the kept the endocrine system healthier. Someone mentioned Baklava. Baklava is goated. Pasha superstar on Linthorpe Road cannot be beat. He's going to try and fight within three to four months. Yeah. So the last Euro event, Cage Warriors, this year is Newcastle. Harry's already fighting on that, defending his belt. And the other ones are kind of quick turnarounds. There's San Diego in December, which would require a whole visa process that I'll have to inquire about. And then I'd have to see what's the earliest next year. Generally, not a lot of events in January. Could be something in February. Could be something in March. So we'll have to see. Opinions on a name that's probably going to make me sound like Michael Bisping because he's read out a name and he's not checked it first. Do you think you'll ever become double champ in Cage Warriors like Conor McGregor or Mason Jones? Don't forget Mason Jones. See, I've got two options with the weight classes. I can go up to welterweight because I'm quite a big lightweight. I can go up to welterweight and fight James Sheehan. James Sheehan, really good fighter. I'm backlogged and I have to see some of his fights. Really good fighter. Really respect him. You know, I don't know if he's got any defences booked, but that would be a great fight. Would love to go fight him in Dublin and then go to the Rolling Donut and get fat as fuck. The other option is going down to featherweight. I don't know who the featherweight champion is. Maybe he's as autistic and retarded as me. Have you ever had Bengali food? No, I haven't, but it sounds really good. Whatever it is. Do you find title defence is harder than fighting as a contender? See, um, kind of... The thing is, when fighting as a contender, I was fighting for a vacant belt, and that was a really hard fight. It's a, it's opponent relevant, really. Definitely like five rounds more than three rounds, but it's rare that you get the five rounds. That's why it was so good Nick Diaz had that long strike force phase where he was all booked for five round fights. If you come to Birmingham, get some Bengali food. If I ever end up sparring at Renegade again, I'll have to give it a look in. Barbecue beans opinions. I fuck with that. I haven't had the tins of the barbecue beans. Um, I'm pretty sure I've got a tin of Heinz curry beans somewhere. And I've never, never got into it. Thoughts on Kareem Abdul Salwadi? Sound bloke. Heard he's good at barbecue. Do you believe you could become the Cage Warriors goat? You're getting close enough. Goat as in what? Because Cage Warriors is generally an organization that leads to the UFC. Obviously, the Cage Warriors go as McGregor in terms of what he's done after. But in terms of just pure Cage Warriors stats, it's a very it's a very real possibility. Uh, cheesy mash thoughts. It's better than regular mash. I think mashed potato is one of the worst forms to consume a potato because you take the nutritious skin out of it and it takes fucking ages to peel a potato. So I'm not a big fan of mash. One of the best, the best forms of potato have crispiness to them. Like lard covered chips or something. Not a big fan of mash. No, I haven't played in the UFC 5. I've been playing a bit of Like a Dragon, Gaiden, Yakuza, the man who erased his name. It's Kiryu, but it's not Kiryu. I've been playing a bit of that. Need to play a bit more. But I've chosen to talk to all of you saps instead. What time did I start? Six or sixteen or six? Hmm. We got like five minutes left. Would you rather fight in Dana White's contender series or the ultimate fighter? 
probably contender series again. Ultimate Fighters. I don't know how Ultimate Fighter works these days. Come to Australia. You've got good coffee in Australia by all by all metrics that people talk about. Australian coffee sounds really good. Generally, if Starbucks doesn't establish in a place, then yeah, your coffee's good. I don't know how Starbucks I don't know how Starbucks establishes anyway. Do you have a spa your nan made? All the time. She head kicked me, broke my jaw. Were you fighting the same card as Harry? That would be something interesting. I have fought in the same card as Harry multiple times, done it in Bellator, done it in Amateur, done it twice in Cage Warriors. It's a bit tricky because of the resources preparing for a five round title fight. You know, the actual night itself is doable. The training camp would actually be a bit trickier. Horlicks, man. Who you reckon you... Uh, this is ba, 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 ba. Do you reckon wins CM Punk or John Jones? Um, Leila and Ali. Any chicken palms today? I could get a palmo burger, but I'm feeling fat as butter. I've eaten so heavy the past few days. I've been training like crazy. I'm just eating heavy. And then... Yeah, it might be a bit excessive. I might want some greenery just so my veins don't feel like acid. What do you do if your opponents react, won't react to your veins? Well, that's your information. You just go in and hit them. If they're so unresponsive, they don't see the veins and do nothing. Well, they might just do nothing when you go to hit them. There's really experienced people. Like if you spar a really experienced boxer, you'll probably tell the difference between your feints and your actual shots. And that's a different thing if he's just a different level. Then you have to just train your feints better or actually establish the thing you're going to hit them with. In terms of if they don't react to your feints, they might not react to your actual shot. And then you just hit them. Do you care about cauliflower? I love, cal I love cauliflower, cauliflower cheese, cauliflower mash, cauliflower everything except cauliflower pizza. I don't know why you'd go through 100 million steps to, to make a cauliflower pizza when you could just have a cauliflower and it'll taste all right. Do you think Bali or Thailand is a better place to train MMA? Well, obviously Thailand would be better than Bali. I can't think of anywhere in Bali you'd want to train. But there's mega gyms in Thailand. You'd probably get staff training at both. Thailand, you're almost certainly guaranteed to get staff. So you're going to have to load up on antibiotics before you fly, which is a bit crazy. But yeah, you're going to get staff if you train either one. Thailand obviously has loads of mega gyms. But you're probably going to end up in some mad sparring, kick someone in the shin kick someone in the elbow, cut your knee open slightly, and then get some infection that eats all the skin on your leg. This guy I spar only spams sidekicks. Can I pass it by just by being aggressive? How to do technical? Well, if you get in the range where you can't throw the sidekick, then you can bop him with your hands. If you move laterally, there's more chances sidekick falls short and misses. If you get good at elbow parries, you can ping that Sidekick across, and he's going to be way out of position for you to kick back or punch back. <clears throat> do you believe in cross training with other gyms and different training partners? Yes, I do. Um, I think there's whoppers who just train everywhere for the Instagram photos, but I believe in training in different places. That's a really solid bet. Uh, yeah, it's a really solid bet training in different places. Just it used to be teams were much smaller, and you have like five or six guys, and you just train with the same five or six guys. Obviously, you don't see the different looks. But there was benefits to that in terms of organizing sessions and in terms of not getting uh, not getting ringers and stuff. Hello, George. How's the weight? What are you trying to maintain weight-wise? From the champ, UFC, Jordan Vachenik MMA. How's it going? My weight is a bit heavy at the minute. I enjoyed the scrum after five fives. I was like 86 this morning, 86 kilos. What's that in pound? Like 190? Yeah, a little bit heavier. I don't know what opportunities there's going to be to fight over the course of the year. So, just enjoying the recovery off the 5 5. Enjoying training and teaching, fully carved up. Had pancakes for breakfast, bagel, salmon, and eggs for lunch. And I've got some naughty tomato crisps. I want to bring it down in a bit. In a bit. I'm going to have a holiday in like a week's time and then bring it down to something a bit more reasonable. 83 as a pre-camp would be good. Someone someone asked, yeah, sardines and 
fucking big ass scrambled eggs and steaks and palm oils and all that shit. Someone asked, how do you get started in MMA? Find a gym and sign up to it. What more is it to do? If you don't have a gym, um, grapple your nan. If you don't, I'm sure someone will happily grapple your nan. Is it better to drop down from 85 kilo and be a heavy light and be a heavy light heavyweight or gain weight? I mean, there must be a typo in there. 85 kilo would be a tiny, a tiny light heavyweight. Should I start MMA or Muay Thai? Do you like MMA or do you like Muay Thai? Why would I need to influence your decision? Um, Muay Thai is a much cooler sport. There's more money and recognition generally in MMA. It's up to you. Do you like do you like the Y crew? Do you like going bang, every time there's a knee to the body or a kick to the body? Yeah, do Muay Thai. Do you like sticking your balls in people's faces with those extra techniques like triangles and north-south position? Then do you like the way a cage feels against your butt when you're getting pushed to it? Probably do MMA. What do you think is the most beneficial striking art for MMA on balance, Muay Thai, because it has every weapon and it has clinch. And before people say, oh, Muay Thai, so you stood still, there's no footwork, I just... You divvies, and you've never watched Muay Thai. Go watch Ole Kiatonawe, go watch Karol Hat, and get back to me. Fancy a scrap behind b and I had a mate who earnestly believed that b and bargains stood for bargains and madness, which makes no sense because it's called b and Bargains. Why would it be called Bargains and Madness Bargains? I think it's just the names of the founders. And then what? Bargains and just generic madness? What? I mean, I, I guess there's plenty of madness. Lerdzilla, really good mover in Muay Thai. Obviously, you get your famous ones. Lerdzilla, Sanchai, um, with some other good Muay famous. Hippie Sangmani had some really good movement. Chamakpet as well. Chamakpet Hapalang is a really good clinch fighter. How how crazy is this? Chamakpet Hapalang is trained under Diesel Noy, arguably the goat of Muay Thai, and then somewhere through his career, started training with Samart, arguably the goat of Muay Thai, completely different styles, and he's took a lot from both of them. Do you season your food? Salt, pepper, garlic granules. Don't add salt if it's already salty. Here's the thing. Salty, it's very easy to over-salt something, have you met Arnold Allen? Yes, I've sparred with Arnold Allen. One round. I would like to do more. But it's there's many times I've eaten something and thought, mm, this is too salty. I've never, ever once in my in, in my life eaten something and thought, hmm, too black peppery. So I'll black pepper the fuck out of them. What's your max bench squat and deadlift? I don't really do for max because there's so much risk doing a one rep max. The, it's like, what's the point? I, I don't care what my one rep max number is. I'll just do it through training. I've done like 125 for three reps in a really deep squat. And then I've, there's no point in me trying to go do a max bench or a max deadlift because the injury risk is really high. And you know if you're progressing by just measuring your weights week in, week out. Um, we're, let's answer one more question. I'll wait until there's a particularly interesting question. Uh, what do you think is the most impressive win in MMA history? And immediately what comes to mind, because I'm going to go some underrated hipster shit, best UFC debut, I know that's not what you're asking, but it's the best UFC debut, MMA history. It's not Anderson Silva against Chris Lieben. It's not Conor McGregor against Brimage. It's not Overeem versus Lesnar. Best debut in UFC history, and most impressive win, is Brian Ebersole versus Chris Lytle. That fight's bizarre. Brian Ebersole throws cartwheel kicks. He's fighting Chris Lytle, who has one of the best guillotines in MMA, and he's literally putting himself in the guillotine so he can grab his leg and take him down. Yeah, Brian Ebersole versus Chris Lytle. See you, boys, if I can figure out how to close this.